Ashree Blakely from Johns Hopkins, and Dr. Blakely. Firstly, I I just want to take the time to thank you sincerely as uh, you know a family member of someone with traumatosis to see uh, you know the dedication and the persistence and the direction uh, that's gone on here at the traumatosis meeting is just amazing considering how. Uh, you know how far we've come, where we're going, and how you know just a few people are really affected by this. But the passion is just amazing. Uh, with that said, what has kind of gone on here at the Schwannomatosis meeting? What are we looking forward to? And then uh, for those patients around the country, um, what would you advise them to do? So yes, it has been a very exciting meeting. It's been my pleasure to be here and to see all of the advances. And I agree, there there has been a tremendous amount of progress just in the last five years, which there are very few disorders you can say that for, that, that we've really made so much progress. So, so at this meeting, what I'm taking away from this meeting is that we are um, clarifying our understanding of the genetic underpinnings of schwannomatosis. We are clarifying and advancing our understanding of the molecular mechanisms behind the tumor, the tumors themselves, and more importantly, or more to the point, the pain that may or may not be associated with the tumors, that there may be pain specifically from tumors and then a whole other category of pain, and that we're starting to flesh out those different causes of pain so that we can better treat them. And then to come to some consensus about what we do and don't know about the clinical management of patients with schwannomatosis and how we make the diagnosis, how we best help our patients uh, cope with what, what they have to cope with. And that was all um, really expertly and compassionately and thoroughly discussed at this meeting. So it was a great meeting. Um, in terms of what would I advise to patients around the country, for patients who know that they have schwannomatosis, someone has given them that diagnosis, the next big step will be for us to do tissue studies and blood studies um, to get a better handle on the genomics. And I think what is likely to happen in the next year to two years is that we do wide scale genomics to try to understand what, what are the genes that are causing the problems and how can we adjust the products of those genes. And so to be in touch with their physicians and their care teams about how they can be a part of that would be, would be really very helpful. We will be looking for patient involvement. For people who don't know they have schwannomatosis, so for the very many people who have a single schwannoma or are believed to have a single schwannoma, one of the things that we realized in this meeting is that there are many cases in which patients simply don't know the other tumors that they have and that there are some people who meet all of the criteria for schwannomatosis who have no symptoms at all and that we you know, need to do a better job of ascertainment of understanding who has multiple schwannomas because although they may be very different from the patients who are seeking care because of multiple tumors, multiple episodes of severe and debilitating pain, we will also learn from patients who have multiple schwannomas who don't have those experiences. Um, and so to seek expert opinion if you're referred to have a schwannoma resected to try to find a center either through the Children's Tumor Foundation Clinical Network or through the Schwannomatosis International Registry to find a clinical expert to guide you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh,